Uh, Ms. Jackson Lee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for your service and the FBI agents across the nation. Since 2019, the United States has experienced a steep rise in hate crimes. African Americans have been targeted in 48.5% of all hate crimes, while hate incidences targeting Latinx have risen 8.7%. Anti-Semitic hate incidents have risen by 14%, and anti-Asian hate incidents have risen by nearly 150%. Director Ray, my time is short. These questions should give just a brief response. Is the Bureau prioritizing its investigations into violent hate crimes? Uh, yes, very much so. Uh, and I could give you more information. It just depends on how much you, you would like here. Uh, uh, you'll have an opportunity. Okay. Uh, what percentage of domestic terrorism cases investigated by the FBI would you now say are motivated by white supremacist type ideology? Well, I'm not sure that I could give you a percentage. Uh, certainly on the domestic terrorism side, um, we have elevated, I did back in June, summer of 2019, racially motivated violent extremism to our very top threat priority band consistent with ISIS. Um, and the biggest chunk of that, by far and away, the vast majority of that, is racially motivated violent extremists advocating for the superior. And you would say that's still today? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now let's uh, direct our attention uh, to the beating of law enforcement in Washington on January 6th. On January 6th, the domestic terrorists who beat law enforcement officers and breached the citadel of democracy of the United States wore insignias of white supremacist groups, waved Confederate flags, hung a noose on the lawn, and they were shouting racial epithets. As indicated, NYPD sent a packet of raw intelligence concerning potential, excuse me, potential violence. Why did the FBI not issue a formal threat assessment with all of that information, including an assessment at headquarters? Well, I don't know about a formal threat assessment. As I was mentioning in response to an earlier question, we did put out uh, quite a number, I think a dozen or so intelligence products specifically geared towards domestic violent extremism and election-related domestic on that violent day? extremism. On that day? On well, January for, Over the course of 20, leading up to and right on up to and including December, the month. Can I get that in writing as to the details of how that progress and whether there was a threat assessment on that day. I need to, to move on, and I thank you very much. Uh, you know that the Norfolk FBI office, as indicated, had an SIR report, situational information report. These are the words, be ready to fight. Congress needs to hear glass breaking, doors being kicked in, and blood from their BLM, Black Lives Matter, and Antifa slave soldiers being spilled. Get violent. Stop calling this a march or a rally or a protest. Get ready for war. Would you agree? that these words clearly could indicate racial bias and an attempt to use race and racism as a potential uh, motive for violence? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I tracked all the, the words in the quote that you read, but certainly the Norfolk uh, Situational Information Report, the information that was online was concerning enough that it was provided, as I said, within... It had uh, Black Lives Matter, slave soldiers, that has some racial overtones. Absolutely, of course. Uh, let me, as you well know, you've just heard me recount the, the Norfolk, the NYPD. Was the FBI aware of any online threats uh, to the Vice President, the Speaker of the House, and specific members of Congress connected with January 6th? Uh, well, I, I can't think of any sitting here right now. Uh, certainly, we uh, were aware of and discussed uh, a lot of online chatter that was out there. I'm going to um, move on. But, Thank you. But I'm not aware of any. any on the day of, did headquarters uh, contact the vice president? Did they contact the Speaker of the House? And did they contact FBI, contact any member of Congress on the day of January 6th? Did any member of the FBI have any yes. contact with any member? Headquarters, of I'm going to speak of your office. Well, well I, I, I know that there was interaction between... Uh, I'm going to ask for that in writing as well, maybe. Okay. Yes, and thank you. Let me um, go to the connection of race and, and uh, the President of the United States, former President. On December 19th, the former President indicated big protests in D.C. on January 6th. There, be there, will be wild. 12.15 on January 6th, he said, you'll never take back our country with weakness. At 1.10 p.m., President Trump said, we fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. At 2.11, rioters breached police lines on the west side of the Capitol. Director Ray, these words do indicate that 
uh, the former president, Donald Trump, helped motivate the domestic terrorist attack on January 6. Have any of these words been reviewed to determine whether or not President Trump uh, words and deeds should be referred to the Department of Justice as contributing to the violence of the insurrectionists on January 6. The gentlelady's time has expired. The witness may answer the question. I'm not sure there's a whole lot I can add on that subject, but if there's something I can provide uh, in follow-up, I'm happy to. I, I asked if you, if you referred these actions or deeds of the President, you're the investigatory agency, to the Department of Justice. Donald Trump's we, actions, words, deeds on that day. Uh, I'm not aware of any investigation that specifically goes to that, but we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of investigations related to January 6th involving lots and lots of different pieces of it, uh, and I want to be careful not to speak with Well, maybe I can get that back in writing. Investigation. I thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might just put on the record for a letter back. Um, there are only 4.7 percent African Americans in the FBI. Uh, much has come to my attention of the lack of promotion opportunities for leadership in the FBI, uh, and the diversity office that you now have does not report directly to the FBI director. Would you please provide me in writing uh, where we are with diversity in the FBI and as it relates to minorities and specifically African Americans? Gentlelady. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlelady yields back. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think. I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th, was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And, I, and I'm, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C., there is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. 
In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.